Hello everyone. My name is Anita Makhariya and I'm the founder CEO of Shubhkamnaye Events and Experiences. As event planners, we are into the business of creating mesmerizing experiences and celebrating your happiness. We are a team of young experienced enthusiasts who believe in creating impactful and truly memorable experiences for our clients. We combine style with elegance and innovations with traditions we cater to corporate events social events like weddings and destination weddings as well as btl activations our offices are in bangalore hyderabad chennai and pune our head office is in bangalore and we cater to pan india requirements with our team support and um, yes looking forward to grow shubhkamna is one of the most enterprising and promising uh, event management companies uh, across the globe that's a small brief about uh, my company and me and um, today we are here to take uh, take our sessions on communication skills this is our session 2 and here we will explicitly be speaking about the methods of communication and uh, i hope we know that communication is all about listening speaking and responding keeping some common goals and objectives in mind what we learned in the previous session of communication skills was what is communication what is the importance of communication what do you mean by communication skills and why is communication required or what are the com- requirements of communication i hope uh, we don't need too much of a recall on this still just for those who have uh, who need to brush up on these topics i'll quickly take you through these topics i hope you all are having your pen and uh, paper with you to make notes and uh, if you have any questions just keep noting it down uh, at the end of the session i'll be sharing my email id so you can free uh, uh write me write to me in case you have any queries okay so uh, what is communication all about yes communication is an activity or a process of expressing or passing on some information ideas or some concepts uh it could be even feelings from one person to another or a place from one place to another place okay uh it involves um uh many uh it involves certain modes that is uh it involves uh three layers so there is a message or a sender of the message then you have a medium of communication and you have the final recipient of the uh but particular information okay why is communication important because what happens is people just don't buy your goods and services events uh, an event industry is all about people management here people buy relationships here stories uh, sell okay and here you need to create magic so just as uh, uh, sait godwin had mentioned people do not buy goods and services they buy relations stories and magic and this can be created with only proper communication uh right from source 1 uh, that is your client till your inter departments within your office organizations with people outside beat your venues beat your vendors and suppliers beat people with whom you need to liaison beat your accounts and finance groups as well okay beat your branding and marketing at any point of time uh precise and efficient communication skills are very much important what do you think is the power of communication if you are very good at communication not only do you win your uh, projects or your clients not only do you increase your uh, business uh, volumes but you increase brand loyalty your sales increase by good communication and networking you have a scope of increasing your business by increasing the referral uh, numbers product royalty is always uh, seen as one of the best and it's at its peak with effective communication in case you are into uh, events related to sponsorships with good communication uh, skills you tend to attract more donations 
your customers will always remain loyal and you will always get repeat business. This will happen only when these ideas are uh, conceptualized and uh, shared with people uh, in the right manners. Now, if we talk about uh, uh, communication skills, knowing uh, how to speak and communicate with uh, all the stakeholders involved is what makes an uh, event impeccable. Okay, so you need to have the right skill sets and you need to practice it time and again so that these traits of yours can uh, result in proper conversions. Brand representatives need to be very insightful to make sure that the event is highly memorable one. Once one event is uh, scheduled and the dates are finalized, it is time to work on delivery of the same. Okay, and this involves a lot of planning and a, and a complete uh, process which needs to be curated in the within the right timelines with the right frameworks. Okay, the expectations have to be set clearly and the tasks have to be communicated to each department or uh, individuals without uh, having any scope for ambiguities or guessworks. Okay. Um, so when we talk about effective communication skills, it is very necessary to have the eye contact with the person whom you are talking in case it is an oral communication. You should have the right body language. Now, as I'm taking this class, if I'm like sitting like this, you know, not in the mood and not presenting myself well, would you be interested in the class? No, you would not be interested. So it is very important that your body language, the way you are looking at the person, the way you are interacting with the person has to be uh, well kept in uh, uh, the right spirits so that the other person is interested in listening to you and trying to understand uh, the information from the right perspective. You should make sure that the person who is listening to you is able to comprehend and understand and interpret the information the way it is meant to be understood. Uh, having a smiling face always helps because that is where you start building contacts. That is where a bond gets um, uh, generated and that is when a person wants to look at you, to listen to you and tries to understand you. Once you have the entire discussion, it always helps when you summarize uh, this discussion. I always uh, suggest that you should always have a two-way communication where it is not only you who are talking. If you keep talking and the other person is not able to follow you or not understand and you're not ready to take a feedback and understand whether he is actually comprehending that information in the right manner, your entire purpose of communicating or sharing that particular piece of information, idea or feelings is completely lost. Hence, you need to encourage uh, having some questions or feedbacks or give them a scope to revert. These are all a part of having effective communication skills. Apart from this, what we would be learning in today's session would be interpersonal skills, verbal communication methods, written communication methods and a combination of oral and written methods, uh, maybe it... Uh, advertisement in forms of advertisements etc or uh, what do you mean by interpersonal communication skills interpersonal communication skills refers to the process of uh, exchanging any kind of an information or a concept or an idea or a goal or an objective uh, amongst people uh, through verbal communication or non-verbal forms of communication. These could uh, highly relate to your social skills or people skills. As I always mention that event industry is um, a people's industry. Here at every level you are dealing with people right from your client, right from your teams, right from your vendors and suppliers, from your labors from uh, your other departments, be it venues, be it hospitality, be it logistics, 
be it your uh, government licenses uh, you are dealing with people again and again so the way you deal with a person how's your uh, how good you're relating to them are you maintaining some kind of a decorum are you being open or uh, ended uh, in their conversations are you welcoming are you approachable all these are your interpersonal skills they include uh, gestures and body language as well and to a certain extent your etiquettes and mannerisms play a very very important role when it comes to effective communication now in case uh, a person a client is uh, already waiting for you uh, uh, at a scheduled meeting and you know he uh, puts his hand forward to give you a shake to just shake your hand and uh, you are just in your own world you don't look at it and you know uh, you don't reciprocate uh, the warmth the way he's expecting do you think you're making the client feel uh, comfortable so it is very necessary that you have the right gestures the right body language so that the other person is interested in listening to you after all event industry is all about selling it is about selling your ideas it is about selling your products and services it is selling your uh, concepts it is about curations so at any point of time it is very necessary that you maintain the right etiquettes and mannerisms when we talk about etiquettes we also talk about not interrupting a person when they are speaking these are small basic uh, mannerisms which are taught to us uh, even as basic habits basic manners the same hold good for us in our business world i hope uh, you all are able to understand so far as i mentioned that a part of your interpersonal communication skills include verbal communications we shall be discussing more on verbal communications non verbal communications the listening skills which is very very important and that is one place where most uh, of uh, the people uh, tend to make mistakes you should be uh, having very good negotiations and assertiveness skills decision making and problem solving skills also are a part of your interpersonal communication i shall take you through uh, each topic one by one in brief and uh, in case you still have any doubts you can always write to me at anitamakhariya@gmail.com uh the first part of this uh, topic would be verbal communication methods now what do you mean by verbal communication method it is talking it is calling a person it is when you are speaking okay an effective way to start any communication is um uh, either you send a text or you write an email but one of the most effective ways is when you communicate with the person face to face or over a call okay and um, many times it always helps especially in case sensitive or time sensitive issues uh, your verbal communication is very very important because it is quicker okay um, having said that uh, when it comes to verbal communications it is a part of maintaining good public relationships you should have good public speaking skills wherein uh, it is very important for you because you are, that is a first meeting right uh, if you are not able to communicate well if you are not able to say what you do try to understand what the customer wants try to tell them that yes we have we can build upon this idea uh, this calls in for a lot of confidence it calls in for leadership qualities uh, it calls in for impromptu speaking there is a lot of um, right vocabularies that is required when you are actually communicating to your clients personal meetings always help because uh, that is when you meet a person you kind of develop a bond Th this is the start of a relationship so when you uh, when you have a face to face meeting or when you have a personal meeting with a person they kind of trust you more and it adds on to your credibility it always is very important to have strong verbal communications especially when it comes to briefing and debriefing uh, uh meetings uh when you have a, a idea which is communicated to you you need to communicate the same uh, correctly to your teams for executions or developing the idea further 
there are also technology based uh, uh, meetings these days wherein uh, you have uh, you meet people online here the communication skills become very important because the other person is not sitting right in front of you your body language may not be very uh, easily seen or understood by the client so what you say your facial expressions the way are you looking at uh, to them uh, having an eye contact with them are you being reciprocative to their body language and are you able to adapt to that changes that they are making in their body language all this is very important and a part of your communication methods as i say that verbal communication is very important it does not mean that written communication modes are not recommended L written communications are very very important especially to reaffirm the confirmations for the particular event or uh, your pro pro uh, process your ideas your concepts okay and um, when drafting uh, any kind of a contract or uh, any kind of a closures emails are very very important your uh, internet websites your letters your proposals your telegrams or faxes your contracts the way your advertisements are designed or your brochures are made or any form of a messaging all these are parts of written communications any pertinent uh, any pertinent information can be a uh, crisp and concise in the forms of emails and this is uh, the right way of communicating and it is uh, it actually goes a long way if you can manage this communication in the right manners at times it becomes very necessary that you have uh, uh, your teams uh, working and delegating work to them even uh, in that scenario when you are delegating the work it always helps that apart from verbal communication you, you reaffirm the discussion through written ways because they help you both it acts as a strong reminder a person can go back to the written message uh, through whatsapp or through an email or through an sms uh, they can re revisit the communication and again and again so the scope of forgetting or missing out on important details is eliminated hence in today's world uh, especially in our event industry it is recommended that you have a combination of both the oral and written methods this um, this is very very much important because that is when a clarity is set in and even your client knows what you are doing and even your team knows what is expected out of them giving the entire budget presentations and estimates giving the designs uh, or uh, the elements involved in an event or the to do list for each and every person or department wise when you do that orally and back it up with written uh, you are uh, sure that the uh, the event success is going to be much more higher you need to have follow ups with your clients with your employees you need to interact with them and engage them to build this rapport and only once this rapport is built you can have lasting uh, relationships you need to always ensure that this is a open and a two way communication getting your entire workforce communicating on one single uh, platform always share per, uh, important information before the event reconfirm it on the day of the event is it enough when only one person talks and there are no listeners in the room of course the key to any effective communication is the art of listening listening um is one of the most important uh components of effective communication as i said that communication is a two way process to increase the effectiveness uh, the ability to listen is of high importance a good listener is always a good communicator unless you understand what your client wants you will not be able to do justice to that particular event similarly unless every person or stakeholder 
or your department uh, representatives know exactly what he or she is expected to do, the event cannot be successful. Hence, one who listens and understands will always be able to communicate more effectively and efficiently. Listening is the key component to ensure that everything is in its place and there is no misunderstanding and the event is very smooth. It is very important that we know uh, once the thought, is, thought process is clear, this con idea has to be uh, conceptualized and the same needs to be communicated in the right manner to the client, to your departments, to your suppliers and vendors in the right for, uh, way. Just like how, uh, just as uh, uh, Mr. Stephen Covey says, most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply, to respond or to react. And this is where we make the biggest mistake in communication or in any event. Failing to listen properly leads to misunderstandings and missed opportunities. Giving someone the space to talk about themselves and any potential issues gives us better insight for that particular event. You need to speak where it is very important, but at the same time you should be a good presenter of what you want to speak. So active uh, listening has various components. It includes your hearing content. You need to listen with feelings. Observe the body language. When you listen, it is not just listening the words of the person who is speaking. You also understand a lot when you observe the body language of a person. And when you listen, listen with an open mind. Don't get judgmental. Be neutral. Be self-aware. And try to question people if there is no clarity. Or if you... And always try to give a feedback or... You know, ask for clarifications where you, where you feel that the information is not relevant enough or is withheld for any reason or is incomplete. When you clarify this, you always summarize again what was discussed and that is when you actually reinstate the faith that yes, what you heard or what you spoke is understood and interpreted in the right manner. Having strong negotiation skills is very, very important as an event planner. Uh, you will want to, ne negotiations come at every level, okay? So when a client is sitting with you, negotiations come in place there because the client will want you to do, deliver the best. They will want you to uh, consider the goals and objectives. They'll want you to consider each and every element with no compromise on quality or quantities. But at the same time, when it comes to budget estimations, they will want you to give the best in the least possible rates. This is where your negotiation skills come of huge importance. You will need to negotiate in terms of ideas, in terms of concepts within your teams. Negotiation skills comes again when you are dealing with your vendors and suppliers because they are strong negotiators too. Only when you are able to get a good price and good quality from your suppliers and from your vendors will you be able to deliver the same to the client. So if, they, if you cannot negotiate well with your suppliers and vendors, you will not be able to give the best price to the client and the scope of losing that particular event or that particular client uh, increases. So it is very important for you to understand the skills of negotiations. Skills of negotiations do not mean that you become hardcore and a Hitler in your, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, rating, pricing or rate policies or your uh, finances. Always be adaptable uh, to incorporate changes, to understand the client requirements, make some necessary changes. You need to practice the skill of negotiations very strongly. For this, you have to have a strong strategy 
uh, in place so that you know to what level. Some people negotiate for just for the heck of negotiating, okay? Maybe you're giving the best price, but just because, you know, uh, I'm the client and I want, I feel, you know, that, uh, okay, you, you're giving me um, at 35 rupees per square feet as the stage. Come on, you can give it to me at 25 without understanding what kind of elements you're giving. What is the size of stage? Are you giving me a new platform? Are you giving me masking in, is included or not? So without understanding the logic, some people want to negotiate. Hence, have a strategy in place. Be flexible and be very sincere with your client. Be upfront and be transparent with them. Clients always respect transparency. They always welcome suggestions from you. But as long as it is not to increase your billings, of course, we want to add on elements so that, you know, uh, we enjoy the uh, benefits of having uh, bigger elements and uh, more components. But at the same time, understand to uh, read the other party needs and be ready to compromise at times. You need to visually, uh, uh, you need to visualize the possible gains and not the losses which might incur. By that I mean that you know when you uh, when you think that okay for once you think that okay let me keep a 20, 25 percent margin in this particular event okay so uh, you may uh, you may quote say ten lakhs to the client assuming that you know uh, maybe seventy five um, uh, say. Uh, Say you're quoting 10 lakhs to the client, okay, but it is only 7.5 lakhs is your actual expenditure and you want to make 2.5 lakhs out of that event. But your client does not want to spend 10 lakhs. He says, no, no, this is beyond my budget. What is the best that you can do? Say uh, 8.5 or 9 is what I can stretch. Now, 8.5 or 9 is what he can do. Now, can you renegotiate? Can you rework your elements and prices in such a way? See, anyway, your cost of production is 7.4. So, even if it is 9, it is 1.5 lakhs that you are gaining there. So, the possibility of gain is what? 1.5 lakhs. What is your possibility of loss? 1 lakh. Is it a loss? No. It is a gain which is not coming to you. That does not mean that it is a loss. Now, suppose the client is very adamant that if you're not doing it in 9 lakhs, I'm not giving you the adamant. Now, it depends on your business strategies, on your way of thinking, whether you want to accept that 1.5 lakhs as your profits or do you want to leave that particular event because you're not able to make 2.5 lakhs. This is where your uh, skills of compromising, your skills of visualizing the possible gains, your skills of reading the other party needs and being flexible and sincere plays a vital role. It is like, uh, do you want to earn a lot of money in this one event or do you want to have this B2B client who's going to give you repeat business and instead of making 2.5 in one event, you make 1.5, 1.5, 1.5 in three events. Now, this again depends on lots of uh, other, uh, this is dependent on lots of other elements and components and situations and your relationships with the client. When you talk about the types of communication, as I discussed, we have verbal communications where you are talking and non-verbal communications where it is basically through written communications or, you know, when, I, when a person is talking to you, you just tend to nod your head either in agreement or in disagreement or you suddenly look lost and you're in some thoughts. All this are a part of communication. When I, when I see a person nodding in agreement, I understand that yes, the person is understanding and is with me on this particular point. Or when I see them nodding a no or shaking their head in the no, I understand that okay, this person is not in agreement. Maybe I need to explain this point again or ask him okay, what is it that he's not able to understand or why is he in disagreement Am I able to convince him after this discussion? Okay. So when we talk about types of communication, you have aggressive uh, communications, you have passive communication, you have a passive aggressive communication, which is kind of a combination. And then you have assertive communication. Uh, what do you mean by aggressive communication? Aggressive is like, you know, it is like, you are loud, you are adamant, you are very strong-headed, you know, you are demanding it, okay? So, you the kind of postures that you might use are, you know, 
yeah. thumping uh, the table and being very loud and you know, throwing your hands all around the place. You have big and fast gestures. Okay, when you come to passive, is you're becoming submissive, very apologetic. You do not have eye contact. You you know, tend to fidget with lots of things around you, playing with things. You know, uh, maybe uh, uh, just playing with your fingers or a pen. You know, finding it difficult to accept the responsibility and accountability. Pass a combination of passive and aggressive is when you are trying to be a little sarcastic. You know that is where you are indirectly being aggressive. Here, the client or your team or the person with whom you are communicating feel that you are unreliable. You are not being sincere. You are not being uh, uh, true yourself. You are trying to be friendly, but actually you are not friendly. So it's more of a pretense in many things. So this is very negative. Okay, the what I just said. These are negative traits. But when I talk about being assertive. Being assertive is not being aggressive, but at the same time, you are putting your point a little strongly, and you have a medium pitch. You're not too loud. You're not raising your voice too loud. You are not overreacting to a certain situation. Your body postures are more open. You are more approachable. You have the right eye contact. You have that smiling face, and you put forward your points uh, very strongly. But at the same time, you are ready to adapt and accept the inputs and feedbacks similarly it is very important uh, as a business entrepreneur or uh, when you are into the event industry there are certain case uh, cases uh, or situations where you need to think on your toes and act immediately okay uh, it is all about speaking when it is very necessary you need to take decisions you need to act uh, spontaneously you need to um, take certain calls though they might not have been scheduled for that particular moment okay so um, uh, in this you have to make sure that there is no ambiguity in your thought process or in the uh, chain of communication, the channel that you are using, the words that you are using, the medium that you are using and the interpretation, all this are in sync. For this you need to have a very strong analytical reasoning, okay, wherein you have uh, data points, you are able to talk of relevant um, uh, ideas, you are able to screen certain concepts, uh, and you know you have the right behavior or uh, techniques in its place so apart from uh, the written and oral and verbal communications verbal communications could be over calls it could be in person meetings it could be through zoom calls these days that we have uh, video conferencing these are all forms of uh, oral communications or verbal communications. Written communications are uh, your emails, your advertising, your brochures, your hoardings, your newspaper advertisements are all forms of your non verb uh, uh, print uh, or your written communications. Now, I just have a small activity for you all. According to you, what are the most important skills that an event planner must have? And what, according to you, has a greater impact on a client? Is it verbal communication or is it non-verbal communication? Or do you think a blend of both always helps? So just to summarize what we did in today's session. In today's session, we spoke about interpersonal skills, verbal communications, written communication, a combination of oral and written uh, methods. Before um, before I take you to uh, the end of the session, I would just like to give you a few tips as aspiring event planners. Okay, so whether you like it or not, it is very important that as an event planner, you are a very strong communicator. 
only then ideas can be turned into realities. Uh, your interactions with the clients, with your teams, need to have your basic communications very strong. In case this is not an inborn talent in you, you can always develop this talent by practicing, by upgrading yourselves, by going through some sessions and classes. These days you have a lot uh, of uh, course material available on YouTube as well. When you are uh, communicating with your clients, it is very important that uh, your client uh, and you uh, have a cordial relationship. At no point of time should you communicate in a manner where you, you make the client feel that you are superior to the client. Okay, so this requires the right kind of communication uh, abilities and knowledge. It is very important to make your client feel very important and that is when the client becomes very comfortable and is open in discussions with you. Whenever you have a doubt, always get things in writing because memories may fail, written documents do not fail. They always support you um, in times of conflicts, in times of uh, memory losses, the short term uh, memory loss that you have, right? You can always refer back to the written communications. And uh, as event planners, you have two vital roles. One is to ensure objectives are met. And second is that not only you, but your entire team and the entire chain delivers as per the uh, deadlines. So all I'd like to say is step into those big events with confidence, with the right objective in mind. Go ahead, you know, have... Uh, have this kind of a nice respectable attitude and be assertive and I'm sure a lot of events will be coming your way. With this we come to the close of the session on communication skills and methods of communication. Uh, in case you still have any doubts or need some clarification or further help you can always write to me at anitamakarya at gmail.com. Until then take care and uh, looking forward to our next session with you.